Hi, I just wanted to um, encourage you on your, if you've taken this journey with me as far as reading through the book of Proverbs, um, we're, today is uh, the fifth, so we're on chapter five, and we're just reading one chapter a day, and I did have a worksheet that I gave out to those, I emailed it to the, uh, the different ones who requested it, if you want one, you can also request it as well, you can either inbox me or comment below. But what I did was, um, while we were reading this um, for myself, um, I made some notes so I can kind of stay on topic, but... Um, we're prospering our soul. And that was one of the main focuses that I had was that we're prospering our soul uh, while we're reading and meditating on Proverbs. And so I wanted to share with you what the Holy Spirit had imparted to me while I was doing this, um, is that to be watchful of your thoughts, your daydreams, and your imaginations. So that is something that the Holy Spirit has imparted to me was that I, that I need to be watchful of my thoughts, daydreams, and imaginations. Um, because if we let any unsavory ones um, simmer, you know, within us, like we're having them, but we don't really address them, um, it's Satan's entrance into our minds to create other destructive thoughts or other destructive emotions. Um, and his point is so that he can defeat God's purpose and plans for our lives. And that's not, I mean, the whole <laughs> point of trying to of prospering our soul is so that we can experience um, and ex uh, enjoy God's purpose and plans for our lives. And so, of course, Satan doesn't want that to happen. So he, uh, you know, so we want to make sure that we're not letting... Um, different thoughts, daydreams, and imaginations just simmer and not really address those things. And so, let me just see. So, um, what we want to do with every thought, daydream, or imagination that are in opposition uh, to God's wisdom, ways, and righteousness, when they enter our mind, we want to cast it out in Jesus' name. We don't want to just let them simmer and let them just kind of run with it um, and just follow that direction. We want to be able to cast them out. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 um, Verses 1, it goes through. You can just read the whole chapter when you get a chance. But it tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, um, um, but they're they're not mere flesh or human, and they're not natural, but they're uh, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we can capture, or as a prisoner, every re rebellious thought, um, every proud, lustful, or carnal level thought um, and make it bow in obedience to Christ, his truth, you know, and God's wisdom and God's righteousness. And so we can do that because he's empowered us by his Holy Spirit to do that because the Holy Spirit recognized he's here to, to lead and guide us into all truth. We have the, uh, the indwelling power of God within us to help us um, live successful in life as a Christian. But so he recognizes every evil report in a sense that tries to enter in our minds, but he's also empowered us to take control of it so that it does not control us. OK, but that's a choice that we have to make. And so but uh, while we're reading Proverbs, our soul is prospering. So I believe that we're being healed. And sometimes even as we're being healed, refreshed and cleansed and delivered from things that certain things will start surfacing without us even like where'd that thought come from? You know, why am I why am I daydreaming about that? You know, why is that? Why am I starting to feel this way? You know, that's just sometimes uh, things just being brought to the surface to be gotten rid of. Okay, and so, but we don't want to ignore it. That's the key. We don't want to ignore it because we don't want to have those those negative things um, be an entrance to cause us to miss out or to stop um, the progress that we're making in prospering our souls. And so, um, so in instead of uh, entertaining or our opposing thoughts, those opposing thoughts, emotions, and daydreams and imaginations, uh, we have to shut them down. We have to rebuke them, and we have to stop following in the direction of that thought or that daydream, you know, don't, don't just keep thinking about it. Don't just keep letting yourself feel the anger or feel the, um, the self pity or whatever it is you have, whatever is, you know, surfacing up. I don't know if any of you have noticed, um, just it's only been four days, four full days, I guess five, if you've already read your, um, chapter five, but you know, sometimes maybe there's certain things that are surfacing within you that you're starting to notice, like, you know, things that you felt like you've dealt with, but they're surfacing up. And it's just sometimes I just think it's the enemy just trying to distract us um, from pursuing what God has for us. And so let me see. Philippians 5 and 13 states that we can do all things through Christ who infuses us. This is a different translation. I think it's the, pa the Passion Translation. He infuses us with inner strength and confident peace to conquer every difficulty. So we have that. The Holy Spirit is with us. I mean, if you have, if you accepted Christ, you have the presence of God, the Holy Spirit with you to help you conquer every difficulty. So when change and transition is occurring, which is, I believe, what, which is what's happening, you know, that change and transition is happening. Um, not that things were bad so much as in your life, but that, that God just wants more fruit. He wants um, more harvest from your life, which is good because we've asked him for it. So he's helping us with that. 
And so um, when change and transition is occurring, certain thoughts and daydreams and imaginations are sometimes produced to distract us or even derail us from God's path. And we don't want to get off of God's path. We don't want to start um, spending time having these idle daydreams or idle thoughts or just we don't want to do that. We want to stay focused on what um, God is doing in our lives as we're reading Proverbs. That we're, we're receiving uh, what God is, what God has for us. And then, um, Prover- I mean, Philippians still four, chapter four, verse six through eight. This is the Passion Translation, but it says, "Don't pu- don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer." throughout each day. So that's very important. We have to be prayerful while we're reading uh, the scriptures and meditating on the scriptures. We want to be prayerful. And it says, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude, having a thankful heart. So when you do have a faith-filled request before God, when you are praying in faith, you will have a thankful heart because faith says like you have that confidence that you have what you prayed for which means you're going to thank him for it. You're going to praise him for it. But tell him every detail of your life, including the frustration um, and the struggle that you're encountering while going through this transition and change. And sometimes I think that's what happens. Like when I was reading that, what what kind of made me think about it was that that scripture was that um, there are times when we are going through transition or when we're prospering in our souls. And so there's change that's happening. There are times where certain thoughts or certain ideas will start coming to mind. But we have we have power and authority over that. And then it further says in verse 7, Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. So God's not going to leave us in the dark. God's not going to have us just struggle and have to deal with things on our own. But he's going to uh, give us his peace that, and give us his answers um, uh, in the midst of it. So verse 8. Sorry. So verse 8 says, So keep your thoughts continually fixed on... Hold on. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, honorable, and of good report. Fasten your thoughts on every glorious, wonderful work of God, praising him always. And so that's what we must do, is that even while we're casting thoughts, we're stopping that thought, stopping that um, imagination, stopping that daydream, not following the path of that. But in it, but also just praising God for his goodness, praising God for um, and glorifying him for who he is what he has done and what he is doing right now in your life. So just changing our focus, you know, changing, uh, um, changing our thoughts, changing our emotions, changing, <clears throat> excuse me, the <clears throat> changing the daydream to something more positive and to the future that God has for you. Imagining the vision that God has given you, <clears throat> putting your, your thoughts on the vision that God has given you. And keeping that focus right there. So we have the victory in Christ. And so I just want to encourage you that as you continue this, that you are going to experience the transition and change. Your soul is going to be prospering as God has, um, as God pours into you, as you're receiving what God has given to you. But don't, don't let the thoughts, those like ungodly thoughts, um, cause every person, you know what it is. You know, I mean, what thoughts they are. And maybe not be ungodly or sinful in that sense, but maybe it's just not productive. Maybe it's just a thought that you shouldn't have, you know, a thought or an emotion or, um, an imagination or a daydream that you just shouldn't have because it's, it's not even in the, you know, it's not in the path that God has you on. You know, it's not in that direction. And so you're going to bring that thought captive. You're going to bring it under subjection. You're going to make it so that, no, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to yield to this. I'm not going to follow in that direction because I, I, I'm, my soul is prospering and I'm going forward in the things of God and I have the victory. Amen. So just continue to, um, to read. As I said, if you want a worksheet, it's just a simple worksheet that I just use for myself because it helps me to stay focused, um, on what I expect to receive or what I expect to experience at the end of or during and at the end of this um, this faith challenge. And so if you would like one, you can make a, a comment below your email. But if you don't want your email public, you can also just go ahead and inbox me. Um, and then I'll just send it out to you. I'll just email it to you. Alrighty. So God bless. Uh, enjoy your week and re- continue with the... Um, reading the book of Proverbs, writing things down, and just going back over what you wrote down before because the idea is that the Lord has really been uh, ministering to you or giving you instruction or some kind of um, insight or comfort or whatever it is your, uh, whatever it is he knows you need. Uh, but review that, review your notes so that you can just continue to build upon it, not forget about it, but just continue to build upon it. Amen. So God bless.